welcome to a special breast cancer edition of Location. I'm Jamie Santoro. And I'm Diana Trasati, and here's your news now. October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, as well as Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Think pink and purple. Do your part to help fight the disease and violence. Now let's take a look at how Cabrini's promoting breast cancer awareness. Hi, I'm Dana. I am a junior and I work at the Health Hut, which is supported by the Office of Health and Wellness Services. This month we are supporting breast cancer research. Raising breast cancer awareness is really important because it doesn't only affect women, it affects men too. And a lot of people overlook it and think that it's not going to happen to them. And once every two minutes, someone is diagnosed with breast cancer. In order to prevent um, breast cancer, every three years you should see your healthcare provider or doctor and get a breast exam. This week is Think Pink Week. We also have a movie on Thursday for with party. You can watch uh, Stepmom and you can make like a pink ribbon that you can put on your shirts or your backpacks. And on Sunday we have a thing called Pilates for Pink, which you pay five dollars if you're a student and ten dollars if you're not, and you can get a t-shirt and you do Pilates and all of the money goes to breast cancer research and awareness. For more information, people can visit the Health Hut this week and next week, um, and we have a bunch of pamphlets on breast cancer and how to um, examine yourself, and you can also go to the Office of Health and Wellness Education for more information, um, as well as cancer.org. New to Cabrini College this year is the Community Service and Outreach Club. This club allows students to volunteer their time in the community on and off campus. President Chris Cantwell wants to ensure that opportunities are provided to students to participate in events and causes that are meaningful to them. Later on this month, the club plans on serving soup at the St. Francis Soup Kitchen in Philadelphia. Now let's see what's going on with the dirt sheet. What's up all you stars and studs? I'm Jake Veterano. And I'm Gianna Chicatino, and welcome to The Dirt Sheet, where we give you the latest in entertainment. Moviegoers across the globe have been pooping their pants after viewing the new horror film, Paranormal Activity. It's supposed to be the most terrifying film in 10 years. I'll tell you this, Gianna, it's gonna take a lot more than some lame ghost movie to freak me out. <laughs> In other news, 89.1 WYBF-FM The Burn continues to deliver top 40 hits and the most up-to-date media coverage in the Philadelphia area. Not anymore! Who the hell are you? I'm Jillian Schneider, world-renowned attorney representing Mr. Jack Johnson. Is that a monkey? We're here to collect what's rightfully Mr. Johnson's for the Performance Right Act. What's the Performance Rights Act? Lucky for you, I brought along an educational video on the subject. Oh, good. Well, I guess that's all we have for you this week. I'm Gianna Chicatino. And I'm Jake Veterano. The Glamazon. Silence! It seems as though every time people turn on their radio, there's some form of music playing. But don't get used to it, radio fans. Times are changing. The Performance Rights Act is a new law Congress is considering that would require broadcasters to pay artists when their music is played on air. That's really cool, isn't it? Cabrini College's radio station, WYBF 89.1 FM, The Burn, is one station that would feel the effects of the Performance Rights Act. The Performance Rights Act is definitely a big concern of WYBF and will possibly shut us down since we won't be able to afford the taxes that the act wants to put on radio. I think the Performance Rights Act would definitely hurt WYBF, uh, especially since we have a variety of DJs playing a variety of music. The Performance Rights Act is a bailout plan for the music industry. With the increased fees radio stations would be paying, their money would be divided up. 50% would go to the record label, the featured artist would receive 45%, and 5% would be divided amongst the background singers and musicians. The Performance Rights Act is, says that money's going to get split up a certain way. 50% is going to go this way, X amount is going to go that way. But one of the big concerns is, is that money actually going to go to the artist. The bill currently has 46 supporters in the House of Representatives and 7 in the Senate. Students can get involved to help petition against the Performance Rights Act by logging on to SaveYourRadio.org. Over 55,000 radio fans, listeners, and insiders have already signed. But will that be enough to save radio stations? This is Jake Veterano, On Location. 
The Obama administration recently proposed its first federal restriction against the use of cell phones while driving. This decision was made at a two-day summit in Washington, D.C. last week. Over 300 lawmakers, safety experts, and industry representatives attended. Although these restrictions are only meant for federal employees, the government hopes to push states to create laws against cell phone use while driving as well. Cabrini Theater was one of over 120 theaters recently staged in the premiere performance of the Laramie Project, 10 years later at the same time. Over 120 theaters performed the play together along with the play's premiere in New York City's Lincoln Center. A live video feed from New York was broadcast for the first 20 minutes of the performance in each theater, and the satellite theaters concluded the play on local stages simultaneously. The Cabrini College Theater performed the Laramie Project 10 years later on Monday, October 12th in the Grace Hall Atrium. You see, it's the thing I'm stuck with. I mean, the events surrounding the death of Matthew Shepard changed us. The story is a follow-up to the Laramie Project, written by Moises, Kaufman, and other members of the Tectonic Theater Project. The original Laramie was comprised of interviews from the town of Laramie, Wyoming, where 21-year-old Matthew Shepard was murdered because he was gay. See the place where Matthew Shepard died, where he was slaughtered. I just think if that's not enough to get you off the blocks to really make some active, active, significant changes on your campus, I don't know what it takes. Cabrini's Theater performed after a 20-minute live video feed introduction from New York Lincoln Center. The Lincoln Center's performance was hosted by Glenn Close and transmitted to all theaters performing Laramie. To all the audiences in all the theaters around the world who are watching this webcast, we welcome you. At the end of the night, the big crowd applauded the great performances by all the actors in the Laramie Project 10 years later. Arriving into town on Highway 80. Now let's check in with Liz with the weather. Hi everyone, hope you've been enjoying the sunshine from these past couple of days because there's going to be a lot of showers headed your way. Thursday, showers throughout the day, the high 51, the low 39. Friday, showers continuing with a high, or I guess you consider it a low, of 45 and the low 38. Saturday and Sunday aren't looking any better with showers throughout much of the weekend. The highs will be reaching 55, the lows down in the 30s. That's all I have for you today. Back to you, Jamie and Diana. And now let's take a trip around the world. President Barack Obama was awarded the 2009 Nobel Peace Prize for his efforts to strengthen international relations. This is causing controversy because the prize is awarded for an accomplishment. Many are arguing that Obama has not made any accomplishments during his nine months in office. American troops in Iraq will decrease by 23,000 by the end of October. A U.S. military spokesman said only that 120,000 troops will be present. Another large reduction will take place after January's national elections. Now let's check in with Nick for sports. What's going on, all you sports fans? Nick Goulden here with your two-minute drill. The Eagles dominated the Tampa Bay Buccaneers this Sunday with a score of 33-14. McNabb, back from his rib injury, did not look rusty at all as he threw for 264 yards and three touchdowns. He connected with rookie Jeremy Macklin for two touchdowns as the Eagles put it in cruise control for the rest of the game. The Eagles head to Oakland this upcoming Sunday to face the Raiders, who are 1-4. The Phillies have won their series against the Colorado Rockies 3-1. The Phillies won the last two games of the series, but wow, were they close. The Phillies won games three and four by one run. Brad Lidge came in to seal the deal for both of these games. The teams hope to ride this momentum to the next series against the Dodgers. Now on to Cabrini Sports, who brought in a lot of wins this past week. The men's soccer team defeated Centenary College with a score of 2-0. The women's soccer team defeated Keystone College with a whopping score of 6-0. The women's field hockey team defeated Rosemont College with a score of 6-1 and the women's volleyball team won two of their games on October 10th. They beat Centenary College in the first game and William Patterson College in the second. That's all for your two-minute drill this week. Thanks for watching this week's Web Edition. Be sure to tune in next week for another great episode. I'm Diana Trasati. And I'm Jamie Santoro. Have a great day. This week's location has been brought to you by the Cabrini Film Society. Do you like movies? Are you a student at Cabrini College? The Cabrini Film Society wants you 
Join us on Facebook.